Hello everybody, imagine a situation where some of the world's most iconic cities are submerged under water such as New York City. Well, Indian cities are also on that list. According to a NASA research report released in 2021, 12 Indian cities could be underwater by the end of this century. Mumbai, Chennai, Calcutta, Tuticorin, Cochin and a few other cities as well. This is not a theoretical exercise anymore. Climate change is here. Now look into this video if you have any questions about hey, is this just a hypothesis or is there any reality attached to it? So this is a photo um, that I took. My grandparents actually lived here. Some of my best childhood memories were here at Kale. So that is unfortunately what's left of Kale Island. Is this it? Wow. This is from the group of Solomon Islands. There are close to a million people who call Solomon Islands as their home. Solomon Islands is not the only country which is already experiencing this impact of climate change. Kiribati is another island, island nation, which is already facing the heat. Our first stop is Tabukanako. Back in the 1970s, it was a thriving coastal village and the site of one of Abayang's main harbors. Today, it looks like this. Tuvalu, another island nation that is sinking, showed the urgency of the problem by its president standing in water to deliver his address for the COP summit. Now you can see there are different parts of the world which are already being impacted and countries such as India are next in the list. Now what can we do? The first thing we at least need to talk about this problem. Please do go ahead, share this with your friends, family, because this is one topic where only collective efforts can help us move forward in the right direction. Well, to get started with, the sea levels increase has also accelerated in the last few years. Just look at this chart. From 1993, the sea level has raised by 98.5 millimeters. Now, why is the sea level increasing? Two reasons. The physics is super straightforward. Number one, because of the increase in temperatures, global warming, the water is getting heated and when the water heats, its volume increases. And the second one is because of once again global warming, the mountains are melting both on the north and also on the south. Well, to understand even more, why is the temperature increasing? The temperature is increasing because of something called as greenhouse gases, which we have been learning about since we are kids. Now, what is the role of these greenhouse gases such as CO2? Greenhouse gases have a very unique phenomenon. When the radiation from the sun is coming and touching the earth, greenhouse gases do not interfere. They are transparent for the incoming shortwave solar radiation. However, when the Earth's surface is heated and it's emitting the long wave infrared radiation back into the atmosphere, greenhouse gases then are relatively opaque. So they trap this heat. And as soon as they trap this heat, they are building their internal energy. And of course, they release this internal energy later on in across all the directions. And one of the directions is again sending it back towards the Earth's surface. This process is known as radiative forcing. The re-emitted infrared radiation by these greenhouse gases adds energy to the lower atmosphere and increases its temperature. So we can see the primary root cause. It is not actually about the rise in sea levels, the mountains being melted, but it is about the CO2 levels, the increase in the CO2 levels of the atmosphere. Now, how can we control the CO2 levels? And what is the reason why the CO2 levels are increasing? This is a man-made disaster. And the two reasons why CO2 levels are increasing is because number one, the burning of fossil fuel and number two, the change of how we use the land. Burning of fossil fuels is an important metric because when we burn fossil fuels such as coal, oil, natural gas, for our transportation, for energy purposes, or whatever reasons it is, we are basically taking out the carbon that has been stored underground for millions of years and we are releasing it into the atmosphere as CO2. And that is the primary reason, burning of fossil fuels. The second one, we are going in for deforestation. Forests used to act as the sinkholes of CO2. Trees absorb CO2 and that was one of the primary reasons why we were able to sustain our planet so far. But because of urbanization, 
because of agricultural farming methods, we are slowly going into deforestation. Now, these two reasons are the primary ones why the increase of the CO2 levels in atmosphere is becoming alarming. Now, what can we do? What are the governments around the world doing? As simple as that, the first part that the governments around the world are doing is they are looking out for migration plans. Jakarta, the capital city of Indonesia. Well, so far the capital city of Indonesia, they are planning to change the capital itself to another part of Indonesia called Borneo. And there are no other reasons other than the rising sea levels. Second one, when they have money, they are able to build coastal defense walls. One of the richest nations in the world, Japan, they do have money and they are building this infrastructure. New York City and some other major cities, the governments in these cities are basically taking the claim of the land around the coastal area. And they are saying that there are no more constructions that we will give permissions to along the coastal line. Now, this is what the government is doing. Damage control measures so that there is no human loss when there is flooding. Now, what can you and I do as individuals? The first thing that we should do is wherever possible, we should be switching into renewable energy sources. And some of the best things that can happen to us right now are, hey, imagine the government itself is providing up to 40% subsidy on installation of solar units. If it costs for a home unit to be around 2.5 lakh, the government is saying that we will give you subsidy of up to 40%. And well, this unit, once you install this solar unit, you are not going to just generate solar energy for your home consumption only. You are going to send it back, the energy that is being produced at your home, back to the government grid and you make money out of it. If you basically take in an all-in investment and the returns, these returns could be more than your fixed deposit returns of 6%. So do give it a thought. There is definitely some kind of upfront investment attached to it, but it is better than just the FD returns and also we are saving the planet. Now the second one, this might not sound so straightforward. Why? Why do we need to save water? Because if we save water, we are also basically reducing the energy consumption in the entire process. For water to get into our tap, we need to pump it, we need to clean it, and also we need to heat it in majority of the cases. And all these are energy intensive tasks. We're reducing the amount of water that we use is not just for the purpose of water but also for the energy savings as well. So do not ignore the small steps that we can do because there are already a few countries in the world which are facing the heat literally and the sea levels are raising. If we want to save our country, if we want to save the planet as well, we need to act in that direction. Take care guys, please do share it with your friends and family. This is one of the most important videos and one of the most important topics that we all should learn about. Thank you, take care and see you again. Bye-bye.